too young to die. Wait a second, he's smaller than both of us. I'm all backed up the wrong tree. Get him! I'm so sorry! The angels look at Super Report Views, my name's Steve. My name is Ernest, and today we'll be going over the NECA Alien 1-4 Scale Xenomorph, the translucent prototype. Steve, what am I doing in front of the camera? Well, I can only see your arm and your armpits. <laughs> so you're only partially in front of the camera. Good thing I'm wearing deodorant today, or otherwise this guy would be knocked out. <laughs> he would be the one that's corroding. <laughs> but anyways, I'd like to thank NECA for making this review possible because I'm actually really excited for this figure. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Because we have here is the concept figure from the movie Alien. Because original prototypes for the figure and what H.R. Geiger, what his original thoughts on for the suit was that he wanted to actually be translucent and pale. Which is what we have here with this figure. Now, come to find out, that doesn't really work too well with very dark and bleak backgrounds. He stand it out like a sore thumb, so they scrapped it for the big chap that we actually got to see in the film. And funny story, I actually have the smaller version of this guy that we never actually did a review for because I still have mine currently in the packaging. Does that mean we're going to open it this time, Steve? No. <laughs> we need some comparison. We'll open this guy, though, because the big guy is the one I'm actually excited to mess around with. So anyways, without further ado, for his packaging... I actually love this box for the most part because you get to see the figure on the inside on the background you actually get part of the ship you can even see some of the door there and it, it gives a really nice vibe from the movie on the bottom you have the alien eggs with one of them cracking open to wreak some havoc alien one four skills you more translucent prototype concept figure on the top right corner for the side of the packaging you get to see a nice shot of our little bad boy on the inside more alien eggs opening up on the bottom Steve, I don't know which way is better to display him. This way where he's looking at you, or this way? From the front. Really? Yeah, for sure. So All right. Maybe like at an angle, maybe like a compromise. On this side, you get a nice image of the figure inside of the packaging, giant image of the concept figure. Top of the packaging, you pretty much get the good shot of what the egg scene on the bottom is supposed to look like, and a picture of the alien from the film. And for the back of the packaging, you get to see the alien inside of the hallway from the film. He's nearly two feet tall, over 25 points of articulation, jaw open, inner mouth extends, and bendable tail. And if you guys want to read the description on this guy real quick, I will let you. All right, we good? All right. Yeah. And some legal mumbo jumbo. All right, let's get him open up out of his cardboard prison. That's a pretty big prison, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's one of the biggest I have. All right, so now that we got him open up out of his cardboard prison, doesn't come with any accessories, but there will be some assembly required. Stop it. So for the back of Big Chap here, you're going to have to insert each of the tubes and the little crest that sticks out on the back here. Which, each of the tubes, how you figure out which one they go in, is they have their own little patterns. If I can pop one off real quick. Like, you'll see right here, this one has a weird little shape to it. They all have their own shapes. If you have a hard time attaching one of these, use a hairdryer. It does wonders. And then, that's pretty much it. Once you get that in, your uh, prototype big chap is fully assembled. And, I gotta say, in terms of details... This guy's actually a little hit and miss for me. Because for the most part, his entire body is done in a very creamy color scheme. Has a little bit of a cream colored wash over top of it. But what's cool is the plastic here is actually translucent. And he has this very glow in the dark feel to him. Which is really cool. Doesn't actually glow in the dark. But when he's standing on your shelf, he kind of gives off that little illusion though. Especially if you have him illuminated. Like you even see here, he definitely looks super bright. And I have the brightness on this camera turned down a lot for this review. But for his details, I don't actually have the newer version of the big chap. I only have the previous one. So this is actually an entirely new mold for me to mess around with, which is really cool. And I gotta say, first head sculpt, I love the detail for the skeleton on the under section of the dome. Looks awesome. And it's really cool too that you can see the skull very predominantly on the front. It even has the bone here for the nose. So, the alien out of the alien requisition, or the... Resurrection? The, yeah. So, the alien out of the alien resurrection, the newborn, he was just an alien without the... Thing Pretty on. much. So, I don't know why people are complaining about it. He looks... Because fly. the dome's what makes him cool. And you can see on the inside, it's all detail. There's no marker, no lining work that they do for the detail. It's all molded in there. Looks really nice. It's just cool to be able to see... 
what it's supposed to actually look like instead of having the black wash over the top which hides a lot of these details towards the front of the head and the back of the skull here. So you get to see everything, nothing is hidden. And then for the rest of the alien, it's more traditional with a lot of the tubes coming along the side. You have the tube coming around from the chin, which is glued in on the back here of the shoulder. Be very careful when articulating him. He does have a lot of range of motion here and a lot of freedom because the tubes are very long. But just be very careful because if you do pull on them, I do fear that they will rip out back there. But one thing I don't like about the head sculpt, which is, you can see, his lips. I don't know why, but it looks very Planet of the Apey to me. For my taste, not as big of a fan because I do like my aliens snarling. Like, I want them to look intimidating. He looks like he's very happy right now. Like, he, uh, like somebody told a joke. You have something against being happy, Steve? Yes, I do, and having to do with aliens. Nobody's happy in the alien universe. It's a scientific fact. That's not true. Don't you tell me what's true and not true. I mean, what's true is this guy's from Planet of the Apes. Because you'll see here, when I open his jaw, that he does have teeth, but they are retracted. So his lips stick out a lot. And I think it's mainly just because of the plastic here around the lip. It's curling up a little bit, which is what kind of gives it that very apish appearance to me. But then again, it, is, it did come out of a human, so you got a little bit of forgiveness there. And it is different than what we see with most every other alien figure, which is what I would say is the positive of this. Varieties, man. In terms of variety, you don't see too many figures of an alien just kind of in sleep mode. This is how he spends his day looking at the office. The only real technical problem I have with the figure is you'll see on the under section here, is the dome sticks out a little too far. So there is a gap right here at the front section of the head. But for the most part, when you're looking at it from the front, from the sides, it's not too bad. Worst case scenario, he'll suffocate because his helmet doesn't have oxygen. Touche. And then for his mini mouth, which is another thing that's a little bit weird, but I'm growing more and more okay with it, is you can see here, it's very traditional for what we see with the other aliens in that bone coloring. But the mini mouth is actually closed. I don't mind that part. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's something that's like, it's more variety. Because usually you see it, it's like coming out and it's like snarling, getting ready yeah. to chomp on somebody. Well, again, this one's in rest. Like the alien. Exactly. It matches what he is. Yeah, so for me, not as big of a fan. But it does give it a lot of variety, though. I like variety in my life, Steve. I like the weird stuff. That's why I'm okay with it. And yeah, this has a huge chin. Uh... I feel like they should have made Very it. huge, but he needs a cleft right there. Uh, yeah, I feel like I should have made it Peter <laughs> Griffin's chin, at least. If you're going to go that yeah, route, just... <laughs> make it a right one. And then for the rest of his body, he has this very nice skeletal rib cage with more of that cream color on the front. You can see the more spinal section on the front and also on the back, which does extend outward from the body and goes along the entire course of the back into the tail here. Bring back the front, Steve. You know what I really like? is with this color, this looks like skin right here that's peeling off of it, like human skin. Yeah, it does give it a more human... Right here, too. Yeah, it does give it a more human texture to it, which kind of makes it scarier and more relatable. But then again, how the heck is this going to hide in the dark? I, I get what they, you know... What I they get did. why they canceled, why they said that this was a bad idea. And then for the tubes on the back look really nice, too. Each are kind of going off in their own directions, which I, which I do like. They're not symmetrical, which is really cool to see. Same with the spine on the back looks really nice too. And it has more of that bony protrusion coming out of the top section here of the little ton shaped thing. For his arms, very humanoid. Some more tubes running down the base of the bicep and the forearm with more of those little membrane sectionings on here. The one thing I maybe would have liked to see is maybe a little more color variety for the membrane. Granted, they went with what you saw from the picture, so it makes sense that it doesn't. Yeah, but like the previous ones, the red ones we did, they had like a little bit of pink color in here, which made it stand out more. But it is supposed to look like that. It's just kind of like, if I was designing this alien, I might have done that. And then he also has that little bony protrusion on the back here, which I would be a little bit careful because... These little things, if he, say, tips over, this catches on something, it could possibly break, so be very careful when you're putting on this. 
If you guys do pick this figure up, make sure to get a stand for it. Although we notice he actually stands on his tail pretty decently. <laughs> Don't recommend that as a permanent way of displaying your alien, but it is a temporary solution if you needed to. But definitely do get a stand. And then for his waist, looks really good too. More tubes running down his stomach region here. His little knobs, knobs I'm going to call them. What are those, Steve? They're like little computer knobs. You like twist them off, you get your uh, spark plug out of there. They confuse me and enrage me because I don't know what they are. <laughs> well, he's got more of like those little buttons on the side towards his rear end. And then for his legs, very humanoid. More tubes running down these side sections. Some more of the membrane that we've seen on the forearm there. Knee section looks pretty basic. Has more of the knobs here on the side of the knee. For his feet, very humanoid. Four toes. Two little... Kind of looks like... A mouth? Yeah. On the back here, even it look, appears to be teeth right there. That's, That's super I mean. creepy looking, like seeing it at large size. <laughs> does show a lot of detail there. That's actually really cool. And then for his tail, which is pretty thin in comparison to the body, but holding your hand, it is pretty thick. With a wire going out through the course of the tail here for your articulation. And then at the tip of the tail, you get the what I like to call the little blade on the end. And then for his articulation, head look up about that far as I'm making him grimace a little more. Head can look down about that far. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Really nice wiggle to it. His shoulders can go up about that far, down about that far. All the way around. Keeps having a little bit of hair on him. My dog likes to run around in here when I'm not at home. Uh, for the top part of his bicep, has a rotation. No, a little bit of rotation here at the elbow. Also has a decent bend. Only a single joint here, so nothing too crazy. And can rotate all the way around. For his waist, can go... A little bit side to side. A little bit afraid to try to rotate him all the way around, but it can move a little bit. Can go a little bit forward, a little bit back. Has a very small wiggle for his waist. Really nice splits. Also comes in about that far, and they are on a ratchet joint, so he does hold his leg positioning very nicely. His leg can go forward about that far. Eh, backwards about that far. You also notice here that this is actually made out of soft rubber, so you can get really nice articulation out of it, but you might have to do what I'm doing here and pop it back out after adjusting your leg. Plus there's a rotation here at the upper portion of the thigh, as a double joint here at the knee. It's a really nice bend there, but no rotation. His feet can go side to side, a little bit of a forward and back motion. Has a bend here at the toes. And the tail is, again, a bendy wire, so you can pretty much pose this however you want. And for some quick comparison, figure we probably get the most impressive figure of my collection, which is the Gigantic Series X Plus Godzilla 1962. Which is kind of funny, because the NECA one stands a head taller than uh, King Goji we have here. But in terms of size, not even close. But then again, the alien actually weighs more than King Goji, which is kind of weird. I'm so confused. <laughs> This is a lie comparison. Look how bigger he is, Steve. Well, you also think about the price tag. I can almost get three of those aliens for one King Goji. And for some more comparison with the Godzilla figures, here we have a nexus of 30 centimeter kaijus with 1975 Mechagodzilla and Titanosaurus. Wait, they're 30? 30 centimeter. God, what's They're 12 his? inches. What's his then? Uh, he's over two feet. All right, and for some more comparisons, here we have him next to the 18-inch tall NECA Gypsy Danger and the Toy Bizzilla. And here he is, paired next to the original release Big Chap from NECA and the prototype smaller alien that I still have in the packaging. Steve, we need to open it for comparisons. No. <laughs> I'm okay with mine being in the box. Big guy, he needed to be flashier. Yeah, I went there. God, I'm sorry, I'll pick it back up soon. Go tip over your alien. So overall, the NECA 1-4 scale translucent prototype alien. I gotta say, I have some mixed emotions on this figure. Why, Steve? Because for starters, I really love the articulation on this figure. For being such a large figure, it's very impressive and literally what you get with the smaller figure. And the details on it, I think, are better than what we got with the previous version. Even though mine's still in the packaging, but you could clearly tell the larger scale figure is definitely the more impressive of the two. So one of the positive things is they actually upgraded it from the smaller to the bigger one. And I love just how much more the translucent plastic shows up on the larger prototype than it does on the smaller scale one. Now, 
There's a couple of design choices I'm not quite as happy with, with that being the more passive expression that the alien has over the more snarling one that I prefer. But somebody like me who collects weird stuff, that's fine, you know? I'm okay with that. I do love that it's, it has variety. Like, if you're a collector that wants a very standout piece in your collection, you can't do much better than this large-scale figure because it's going to be a very eye-catching piece on your shelf. And because it's a standalone piece, like, there's not going to be another alien that you're going to have posing with it. Or even characters, because you never saw Ellen Ripley standing with the prototype in the movie. So, it just being by itself is perfectly fine, and that's when I start preferring larger figures over smaller ones. And you'll definitely grab your attention with other alien figures you're going to have them displayed with, and the attention of people coming to check it out. And I think he also makes for a really awesome conversation piece, because with the backstory on it, it's definitely one of the more interesting alien figures as well. It definitely is why one of the reasons why I get weird stuff like this, because like I have people walk into my room and they'll be like, what uh, is that, you know, and it's like, it's why I get the weird stuff, you know, mm -hmm. over the normal stuff. Like you, and your room full of normal Godzillas. You mean like half of them being normal and half of them being funky colored weird shaped Godzillas? Yes. <laughs> Sweet. So in the end, I would actually still recommend this figure for you guys. I think there is enough variety in this figure to really make it worth a purchase. Because even if you own previous versions of Big Chap, it's going to pose very nicely with it, and the color contrast is going to work really well for that. So if you guys want a little bit more variety in your alien collection, then look no further than the 1 4 scale NECA translucent alien prototype. But what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up any of the alien prototype action figures from NECA? What's your favorite weird alien action figure? My newborn. Or is Starship Troopers the smarter thing? NECA make that happen. Please let us know in the comment section below. We'll also have closer pictures of him on our website if you want to click the link in the description below. We also have a Patreon account if you guys want to help support the channel. Also a link in the description below. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.